Hey Online Church, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you may be joining us from, we're stoked to have you with us. One of the traditions that we have here at Bayview is on the first Sunday of the month, we like to acknowledge the traditional landowners on the land on which we meet here at Bayview on the Mornington Peninsula, the Bunurong people. We want to pay respect to their elders, both past, present and emerging. And another thing that we like to do here at Bayview is we love to celebrate the gift that life is. And we celebrate that gift by celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And although we can't meet together at the moment, we still want to acknowledge those birthdays and anniversaries that are happening through the month of June. So if it's your birthday this month, happy birthday. If it's your anniversary, happy anniversary. Send us in pictures of how you're celebrating. Let's celebrate life this morning. Let's celebrate relationships. We were created by a relational God for relationship with him and each other. Let's celebrate that this morning, church. lovely tradition here at Bayview Church. Whenever one of our Bayview folk um, community leave us to enter their eternal home, 
we just like to honour them by lighting a candle and just together pausing to give thanks for their life among us. Sadly for us, John Henley passed from this life to the next last Sunday. Together with Valda, they were foundation members of Bayview Church and were really much loved here um, and respected for their pioneering spirit as um, the churches um, here on the peninsula made some big decision, decisions to just um, move forward in their witness to God and uh, to just uh, enlarge his kingdom or grow his kingdom here on the peninsula. So can we just stop for a moment and let's just light that candle now and, and then pause and pray together. Let's pray. Father God, we, um, we believe that all life is precious to you and as such never goes unnoticed by you. We want to thank you for John's life um, a very full and productive uh, life, faithful in service to you, in the churches that he served as a youth and worship leader and elder and right up to retirement here on the peninsula, he was serving you. We want to thank you for the love and influence he has had in the lives of his family and the communities in which he worked and those that he just shared his faith with. We want to thank you too for his vision and passion to see your kingdom expand here in this place and move into new seasons. For his encouragement and um, his words of affirmation to the leadership here and for his, just his beautiful concern and curiosity to stay informed and interested in all that was happening here and his care and interest in the lives of others. So we just pray together now that you will comfort us all as we farewell and miss him, and in particular his family, as they grieve the loss of his physical presence. Reassure them, God, that he is now reunited with his beloved Velda and family gone before him, as he rests in the peace and safety of your loving eternal presence. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, always my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, always my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good. King of my heart, be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, always my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, always my song, cause you are good. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, 
never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down you're never gonna let me, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from always my song So um, my name's Chris. I um, moved down to the peninsula in December um, after living in the city. I, I worked down in Red Hill at a winery um, doing sales and marketing there. Um, big family, um, one of 10 children. Um, I'm the only Christian in my family um, as well, which is um, pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> um, uh, and a pretty dysfunctional family as well, so um, it wasn't easy growing up. I grew up um, a very quiet and probably a little bit more timid, anxious driven kid. Um, uh, yeah, but lots of um, alcoholism and which is surprising that I'm in my, my role, but um, <laughs> a lot of, uh, but more so drugs in my family. So it's been a pretty crazy, um, growing up in that family. but um, I think looking for a community that I think will be real enough for me to um, uh, be part of. Um, I didn't know too much about Bayview before I came down here, but I, um, I knew people who knew people here and they said that it'll be a good community to get involved with. It makes me it, like it's a hard. Um, it's hard for me to get to church on a Sunday um, because of my work commitments. But um, being able to have a Christian community um, down close to where I live um, and being part of a life group has been really good in my transition as well. Um, you know, um, and it's been very encouraging for me to find some really cool cool people I could connect with that I might not have met otherwise. Yeah. I started going to church when I was in just at the end of high school. Um, I met um, <laughs> I met a girl at a party and um, I went there because she was at church. <laughs> I went to church because she invited me. Um, uh, a bit of a flirt and convert kind of thing. I think um, at the time I was I was going there for her, but over the time uh, over the couple of years that I was hanging out there, I started listening. But I still had a lot of um, anxiety, a lot of depression going on in my head, and I wasn't quite willing to accept God at the time. One time in particular, and this is um, back when I was about 21. Um, I was battling crazy anxiety in the middle of the night and um, I'm having a voice in my head telling me to um, just kill myself. Um, two o'clock in the morning I messaged my mum um, just saying I loved her. Um, really, really crazy time and I've got this voice talking to me until about three o'clock in the morning. I'm screaming back at it. My housemates could hear me as well and didn't come in and visit but 
and check in, but um, they said I was crazy the next morning. But God, um, I really felt like in the, in the midst of my screaming and just me getting quiet in that time, in my sobbing, um, I, I really felt like God was telling me, it's okay, I'm here, I'm here. I love you, I love you. And, and I know, I think I just cried myself to sleep that night and had a little bit of peace in the morning. And I haven't really had that kind of anxiety again since then. I still have bouts of it, but nothing quite like that. Um, I think God's really put some good people into my life, um, in, especially around now. Um, I've got some really good friends who um, keep me accountable, and I think accountability is really important when you're going through things like that. Um, being able to have people that you can trust and talk to um, when you're not feeling 100%. I, I think I always struggled trusting people um, um, like all my life and I think finding and it's really hard to um, find those people I think I invested time in people um, I think uh, I, I made some friends back in in the day when I was doing Bible college and um, you're in classes with them all the time and you get to talk about life and you know um, and you kind of pick your people who you find there, but I know finding people who are like you in a way, or have that same, who go the the depth that you go in sharing that that inner stuff, you know, the stuff that you're struggling with, and if they kind of <laughs> bring it out in you, I, I feel like I don't know. I I think the big thing is finding finding people who are like you or going through the same, I think even just having people around the same age and just good, for me it was just having good blokes around who were there to have fun and um, have fun with, encourage, build each, up, each other up, but speak truth, not holding back and call, call you out when you're being an idiot or um, thinking stupid, but also um, having those people who you could do the same with as well. And I, I, I've really um, grown a lot in myself because I've allowed people to tell me I'm an idiot, or, um, but also knowing when I'm not feeling myself as well and they'll ask me, are you okay? Can I pray with you? Or um, good friends will tell you you're an idiot. <laughs> so, um, Absolutely, yeah. I and um, I, I, I did have professional help when I was younger. I think it was really important to. I don't think people should be ashamed of going to see um, a counsellor or a psychologist. I, I was catching up with a psychologist who actually ended up being a Christian, um, not through a Christian clinic or anything like that, but um, they were a Christian and we found out that each of us were and it was just actually a really good God moment and um, and this lady was my counsellor for about two years um, <laughs> and um, but would also pray with me as well so um, as soon as she found out I was a Christian she at before the session she go can I pray with you is that okay and I go absolutely <laughs> um, um, and that was I think that was a really good thing but um, Regardless of whether she was a Christian or not, I think it's really important to actually find someone who doesn't have an agenda, um, to someone who doesn't know you, um, to speak as well, because um, they are trained in that in that way and can often help you work out things for yourself. I, I think self knowledge as well you know what the answers are um, um, and having someone have that conversation with you to help bring them out I think it's a, a really good thing.
One of the things about moments like these, even when they're on an online platform, is that we're all in the same moment together, but we're all standing in different places. Like some of us have had amazing weeks and some of us have had really horrible weeks. And the amazing thing about our God is that he wants to meet us exactly where we are. He wants to speak into our lives the very thing that we need. And one of the ways we believe that God does that here at Bayview is through prayer. And that's why we have this daily prayer rhythm of eight and eight, where at eight in the morning and eight in the evening, in the evening we come around a particular prayer focus. And this week, the prayer focus is for mental health. It's for those suffering with mental health issues within our community, outside of our community, in the world at large. We all know how common it is because either we've experienced it firsthand or we know someone who has. And we need to talk about it. We need to ask people, are you okay? And so before we enter this time of prayer, I wanna ask you, are you okay? Because if you're not here at Bayview, we wanna help you, we wanna be there for you. So if that is you, or if it's someone you know, please get in contact with us and you can do that via our website, get in contact with someone in the pastoral team. But can I just really encourage you to reach out to a friend, to a family member, to a GP, a psychologist, a counselor, Lifeline on their 24 hour support crisis service line. Just reach out because can, can I say from a personal experience, when I reached out, when I got help, it changed my world. We don't want anyone to go through their struggle alone. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray for those that are suffering with mental health, for those that are suffering from a real sense of hopelessness, Lord, that they're doubting whether you even exist because of their life circumstances. I just pray that you would speak into their life the very thing they need to hear from you, Lord that deep within their being, that they may know that you have purposed them for a purpose, that you've created them to create, that their life has meaning and it has intention and it has purpose and that they matter to you. Just do what only you can do, Lord. Change hearts, change lives, change minds and circumstances. Let hope rise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Folks, welcome to Bayview Church Online. We're really stoked that you've joined with us today. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your schedule to be with us. Just a little bit of housekeeping for those of you who are part of, uh, of uh, our Bayview community here. We sent you out a link uh, to an online survey that we would really appreciate you uh, filling in. Uh, we'd like um, those responses back by this coming Wednesday and so that we can sift through it and find out how we're doing as a church during this lockdown period, but also help prepare us uh, for that time when things revert back to uh, us gathering together again as a, as a community. Um, we're continuing our series on the book of Proverbs. And um, you know, one of the first things that we learn about us as human beings is we are relational social creatures in Genesis 2, 18, it says it's, it's not good for us to be alone. We were created for community. You know, one of the great, uh, greatest forms of punishment uh, we can inflict on another person is to put them in solitary confinement. We were built to belong. And that's why so many of us have uh, struggled during this time of social isolation. It's impinging on that primal need we have to be connected with others. The other thing about... Um, about us being uh, together is, is that we're better together. And a great illustration uh, of this, of, of us working together collaboratively is uh, from the example of a, a flock of geese who fly together in a V formation. And science tells us that the birds at the front of that V uh, take the resistance of the wind. And when they get tired, they, they fall to the back of the formation to have a rest. And that way, everyone on the team 
gets to carry the burden and also take some time out. Also what's interesting about those geese is that they are able to fly um, over 70 times further than if they flew alone. And also those at the back of the pack, uh, they like to honk uh, to encourage those at the front to keep up their speed and keep going. So there's this incredible um, culture of, of support and encouragement. And then also what um, happens is if a goose uh, falls to the ground, either because they're sick or injured, uh, two geese will drop down with them to provide them with protection and support until that um, wounded goose um, recovers and is able to fly again or dies. You know, if human beings were just as good as geese uh, at um, uh, being together in team, the world would be uh, uh, an incredible place. You know, we can't underestimate the importance of being connected to others. We are always better together. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says two people are better than one because they get more done by working together. And, you know, we see the value of partnerships in many different spheres of life. In the Bible, we find Paul was in partnership with uh, Barnabas. Uh, he was in partnership with Timothy. And he was also in partnership with Silas. So Paul was never uh, a lone ranger. We see uh, the, the, the value of songwriting partnerships. So I've got my, one of my favorite um, songwriting duos is Elton John and Bernie Taupin. But there's also Mick Jagger and Keith Richards and obviously uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney. And then there are comedy partnerships. Um, Laurel and Hardy, I'm gonna give away my age now, Morecambe and Wise. And then there's also Abbott and Costello, and I'm not referring to Tony Abbott and um, Peter Costello. However, I, I'm sure that some of you folks think that they were pretty comical. You know, life is a journey and we all need companions on the way. We weren't meant to do life in isolation. And the book of Proverbs is wonderful because it has a lot to say about relationships. Husbands and wives, parents and children, employers and employees, leaders and their followers, neighbors and friends. And what I want to do today is to talk about the people and the kind of relationships that the book of Proverbs advises us to avoid. Right at the very beginning of, of, of Proverbs, we read in Proverbs 1, 10, 10, 10 to 15, uh, we're warned about the, the people who we associate with. It says, when peer pressure compels you go to go with the crowd and sinners invite you to join in, you must simply say no. When the gang says, we're going to steal and kill and get away with it, etc., etc., so come on and join us, take your chance with us. We'll divide up all we get. We'll each end up with big bags of cash. My son refused to go with them and stay far away from them. This is kind of like a parent giving their teenager advice. They are teaching them that who they, they associate with is a key determinant in whether they will succeed or fail in life. Uh, a key parental responsibility is to teach our kids to say no to certain people. Even if what those, the, the, those uh, friends um, um, offer, what, what, what those friends offer sounds like it will be rewarding. We're to warn our kids that they risk messing up their lives if they develop the wrong kinds of friendships. Uh, Proverbs 18.24 says there are friends who destroy each other. Uh, many years ago, one of our kids had a, a friend uh, and they were a really nice person, but, uh, but put them together and uh, my goodness me, it was a bit of a toxic mix. Uh, they weren't, uh, weren't, a good, uh, weren't good for each other. And the friendship was incredibly destructive uh, for both of them. And, and Lou and I kind of had to do a bit of an intervention and kind of give some recommendations in terms of, of, of um, um, who our child was spending their time with. But it's not just adolescents who are impacted by who they spend time with. Um, one of the single greatest influences for us all is the kind of company we keep. Proverbs 13.20 says, if you want to grow in wisdom, spend time with the wise. But uh, walk with the wicked and you'll eventually become 
just like them. So we see that association determines formation. We become a reflection of those that we allow into our, our close network of relationships or our inner circle. Our Proverbs 12, 26 says, the righteous choose their friends carefully. And so wisdom says that we need to be really selective in who we uh, choose to spend our time with. It's really interesting to look at the relational circles of Jesus because we can learn a lot from him and how he did relationships. Um, to begin with, there was the crowd the, the, on the outer. And Jesus, uh, we find Jesus ministering to the masses, but he didn't spend a lot of his time with the crowd. Um, uh, underneath or in the, in the next circle of uh, relationships that Jesus had, uh, there were what, what we might call casual relationships. Jesus had connection with about 120, those he uh, taught and trained. And this perhaps equates to people that we might engage with in, in the workplace, um, people that we might see uh, each week at church, but they're kind of, they're kind of acquaint, acquaint, acquaintances. And then there's the close, another layer, another circle. This is, um, represents the 12. And these were people that Jesus intentionally selected uh, to spend his time with. It says that he, that he invited them to be with him. And these are the ones he discipled. And for us, the close are the people that we choose, the people that we decide to be with. And the closer people are to us, the greater the level of impact they will have upon our lives. And then there is the inner circle, the, the three, Peter, James, and John. And they were the ones who Jesus invested deeply in. And the three were privy to things that the others, the, uh, the, uh, those in the 12, weren't aware of. And perhaps this equates um, for us to no more than perhaps five or or so people who we actually give access to, who we uh, choose to confide in, who know what's going on underneath the surface of our lives. So let's look at four kinds of people who we would do well to keep out of the close circle or the inner circle of our lives. Number one, the angry. Don't hang out with angry people. Don't keep company with hotheads. Bad temper is contagious. Don't get infected, so tells us Proverbs 22. There's a difference between getting angry and being an angry person. You know, let's face it, most of us get angry from time to time, but an angry person is someone whose character is dominated by volatility. They've got a short, short fuse. Things trigger them easily and they, they carry anger. Um, we had someone uh, living with our family for quite some time, a, a really, really great person. Uh, but they had deep anger issues that they weren't able to overcome. And it was an incredibly sad day for us when we had to ask this person to leave because their anger was having a negative impact on our kids. And, you know, anger is a little like uh, COVID-19. It's infectious. And so we would do well not to build close friendships or allow people into that inner circle who have unresolved anger issues. Another kind of person uh, we're advised to avo avoid in Proverbs is the rebel. Proverbs 24 says, don't associate with rebels for disaster will hit them suddenly. There is uh, a form of rebellion that's, that's res redemptive and, and very much needed. Uh, people who are fighting for a just cause, people who are resisting powers that oppress people are, are actually, I believe, uh, healthy forms of rebe re rebellion. The Old Testament prophet, pro prophets were rebels. Jesus was a rebel. Paul the Apostle was a rebel. Martin Luther, the, the great um, reformer of the 16th century, was a rebel. Martin Luther King um, in uh, the 1960s was a rebel. But they were, were rebels with a good course. And the great thing about these kinds of radicals and rev revolutionaries is that they had a vision of a better world and a strategy on how to achieve that vision. And they had answers. But there's an unhealthy form of rebel, the, 
the disruptors who are just raging against the machine. They, they're opposing the system and demanding change, but they've actually got no viable plan uh, for a, a better alternative. And this, I believe, is the kind of radical that Proverbs advises us to avoid. Don't allow them close. Don't allow them into your inner circle. The third kind of person to avoid is the gossip. Proverbs 20, 19 says, He who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a gossip. Um, you know, gossip is someone who shares information with others that, uh, without any positive or redemptive purpose to it. Uh, a gossip, it tells us, is someone who sows seeds of strife. Proverbs 16, 28 says, A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Uh, gossip separates the best of friends. You know what? God hates gossip. Uh, in uh, Proverbs 6, uh, verses 16 and 19, it says, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. And it lists um, six things, but the final thing it says that God hates is a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Uh, we're going to look at gossip in greater depth when we look at Proverbs and the words that we speak. But can I just say, you're, you are well advised to keep clear of a gossip. Don't allow them into your close circle. Don't allow them into your inner circle. You will live to regret it. And then the final kind of person that we are to avoid is the fool. Proverbs 14, 7 says, Escape quickly from the company of fools. They're a waste of your time, a waste of your words. The fool is one of the key characters that appears uh, throughout the book of Proverbs. And this person, the fool, is defined by their actions. It, we, we discover that fools don't learn, uh, that they're complacent, they, they don't give a damn, um, they're devious, they don't listen, they refuse to admit when they've done wrong, and they lack self-restraint. That is, they're all about instant gratification. And we're advised uh, to uh, stay away from people who consistently display this kind of behavior. Don't allow uh, fools into uh, your close circle or your inner circle. If you haven't gathered this by now, the book of Proverbs is pretty blunt. It doesn't hold back from calling a spade a spade and identifying what is good and what is bad behavior, who is wise and who is a fool. And I think it's really great to have clear instructions on what and who we should embrace and what and who we should avoid. If we're going to build good friendships, um, the book of Proverbs is pretty clear. We need to begin by filtering out certain people types. We need to avoid the angry, the rebel, the gossip, and the fool. You know, we don't have much of a say in who is part of the crowd or, or who we have uh, as our casual acquaintances, but we certainly can choose who to avoid and who to allow into our close circle and our inner circle. Uh, stick with us over the next couple of weeks. We're going to look at Proverbs, what Proverbs has to say about friendships. I guarantee you're going to find it incredibly helpful as we look at how to make and maintain friendships. Can I just encourage you as I close to um, get into the habit of reading a chapter of Proverbs a day. It's such an incredibly great source of practic practical advice for the ordinary day-to-day -day affairs of life. We're going to move into a time of communion together. You know, one of the, the frequent accusations made against Jesus was regarding the kind of company he kept. He was condemned by the religious leaders of his day for associating with tax collectors and sinners. He was accused of being their friend. And so, you know what, if we are an angry person, if we're a gossip, a rebel or a fool, there's hope for us. Um, Jesus um, doesn't discard us. Jesus will be our friend. Uh, but he won't be the kind of friend who will just tolerate the messiness of our lives and allow us to continue on our path, on a path that is um, sabotaging ourselves and damaging to other, other people. What Jesus wants to do is he wants to uh, transform us and lead us into a, a life of wholeness and restoration. You know, um, we're going to listen to a song now called um, 
unfailing God, uh, uh, unfailing God, faithful friend. And um, during this song, um, what I'd like you to do is just to take time um, on reflecting on, on Jesus and the fact that he is reaching out in friendship to you. And because we're, each one of us is a work in progress and because we're all prone to anger and rebellion, gossip and foolishness, um, it's good to know that as we eat the bread and we drink the cup, um, that Jesus uh, hasn't disqualified us because of those areas of our life that aren't necessarily the way they should be. So while we play this song, would you please uh, take the bread and uh, drink the cup in celebration and remembrance of the fact that Jesus is a friend of sinners.
the world. Dear Jesus, our world is so in need of peace, hope and hope. We pray that people will be united with a desire to have more compassion, understanding, grace, love and kindness towards each other. You see all the needs which are more than we can mention. May the change we want to see in the world begin with us. Amen. Hey, online church fam, we're missing so many things about not gathering together for our Sunday services, but one of those things is that time we spend together out in the foyer over coffee where we share our lives and we share our stories. So after the service today, that is if you're watching the online service live at 11, we're going to have a virtual morning tea. So grab yourself a coffee, click the link in the description below or on our website or in the last email update. But thanks for joining us today. We pray that you found today really life-giving and really encouraging. We pray that during these unusual times that you're not feeling isolated from us. We're here for you and we're praying for you. If you do have a particular prayer request, head to our website, fill in a connect form or get in contact with someone in the pastoral team. And if you are new to our Bayview community and you would like to know what's happening within the life of our community, if you'd like someone to get in contact with you, then head to our website, fill in a connect form and someone will be in touch with you and you will be kept in the loop with what's happening within our community. But let's stay connected throughout the week, church. You can do that via our website, via our socials, by joining in on one of the many Zoom life groups that we have happening. And send us in photos of how you're doing church online. Post them on your own socials with hashtag life at Bayview. But let's celebrate life, let's celebrate the life giver, and let's be kind to each other this week. Mother Teresa once said, be kind whenever possible. It's always possible. Have a great day, have a rad week, God bless. Can I start again right from the beginning? Yep. But, oh, I just complain. The thing is that we are, blah. Oh. How long was that? Oh. To their teenage, uh, teenage, Relationships with people that Jesus had. Well, 